Welcome to Copenhagen, the city known for its Scandinavian minimalism, a lot of bicycles and one of the greatest culinary arts in the world. Today we are visiting Formel B that has been in this regime since 2003 and they received their Michelin star only a year after opening. The kitchen is serving some exciting Nordic dishes here with some influences from France. So please sit down, make yourself comfortable and let's enjoy this dinner together at Formula B in Copenhagen. The menu is set up as follows. You are to choose yourself a five course menu and there are quite a lot of different dishes to choose from. You are recommended to choose like three savory courses, maybe a cheese course and end up with a dessert. But it's totally up to you. And if you want, you can add extra dishes to a cost of 200 Danish crowns. Just next to you right here, before we go to the HMA, I recommend you to start over here with a little uh, crispy taco shell we made from the Nori seaweed with a small piece of kohlrabi and fingerline. And on top you have um, small uh, raw shrimps from Norway. Over here is uh, crispy sun chips we go with uh, an emulsion we made from the glasses and with pieces of Danish blue muscle in this way, and a little towel Both snacks were of good quality and my favorite was the nori taco there with the finger lime and the raw shrimps. It really was bright and a lot of acidity and it opened up my taste buds to what's coming next. We also got a warm towel there with the Formal B logo on it and I think that this was a very nice touch from the restaurant to offer this to wipe off your hands after eating the snacks. Before our first serving of the menu we were offered a very uncomplicated bread serving. The bread was very nice and in a loaf form with some seeds on top, it was warm and together with that we had a local salted butter, it was very good. For the first dish of the menu I chose the poached Romagos oyster with some gold selection caviar, green rhubarb and a black currant wood oil. This was a beautiful presentation and the flavors were extremely delicate. I was a little bit worried here that the oyster would be in the background but it was absolutely not. The caviar and the rhubarb and the black currant was really in the background and just lifted the whole experience with some additional saltiness and some acidity and also some sweet tones coming through here. This was a really good start of the menu. So this time you're having the Danish pizza from Prime Rib, you serve with pickled white asparagus. You have some uh, rames and leaves on top with small grilled pine chops. And the sauce here is a cream we have infused with horseradish. As a second course on the menu, I chose the beef tartare here with some grilled ramson, a horseradish cream and some preserved asparagus. Now just looking on how the plate was presented with the beef tartare being hidden there under the ramsons in the corner of the plate and then they pour the horseradish cream in the middle of it. It looked innovative, it looked fresh, it looked very Nordic in its presentation. However, when we come down to the actual flavors of the dish, it was quite mild. I couldn't really get the horseradish that much from the cream and I think that the beef tartare itself was pretty under-seasoned. And the ramson on top there, I don't know, it was normally ramson is quite a pungent garlic type of flavor, but here it really wasn't. So it was quite underwhelming this uh, dish when it comes to the flavor profile, and it wasn't a favorite. has been glazed and pan seared so caramelized here on top. On the outermost layer of the juice from artichoke on the left has been deep fried and used to hydrate these morels a la creme. With ground elder on top and this you know, an aromatic broth. It's based on juice from artichoke and split with the lemongrass oil. As a third dish, I went with the caramelized Jerusalem artichokes with morels that was cooked down with some cream 
and they pour the aromatic broth uh, table side here. This dish was a little bit confusing when I looked at it at the first time. It almost looked like a bark shell that was on top of the morel steer, but it was actually the peel of the uh, Jerusalem artichoke that they had dry roasted there for some crispy texture. The Jerusalem artichoke itself was perfectly cooked. It had such a nice color to it, almost black in the caramelization, but absolutely not bitter. Really delicate and really sweet tones coming from it. The morels, which I absolutely love, were chopped up and then cooked down with some cream and they were really moist and generous in their flavor. And then the aromatic broth that they poured on there. And I was a little bit worried there that that broth would be too thin for the whole dish. But actually when it was mixed up with the morels there and the cream, it created a very aromatic sauce that was very pleasant to eat. This was one of the highlights of this evening. Piece of lamb neck here. It's been braised and glazed, braised and fermented tomato, and glazed in a reduction of the braising liquid. Chopped up raw thin slices of green asparagus, mint, and a big green cheese leaf on top. We have grilled green asparagus here, and on the side is a piment pepper puree with a lamb stew that's been split with lamb fat. As a last savory course of the menu, I went with the glazed Danish lamb, which was slow cooked and really nice and juicy. And that was together with some grilled piment puree. We had some green asparagus, a shiso leaf and some mint tones coming out from it. It was a nice and vibrant presentation and they poured the lamb dew table side. Digging into the actual flavor profiles of the dish and starting with the lamb here, it was as I said really nice and moist and had a clean lamb flavor to it. I was though missing a little bit of finishing salt here just to lift it up a little bit to that next level. The whole combination here with the grilled piment puree and the green asparagus and the shiso leaves and the mint tones and the finishing sauce there with some roasted tomato in it. It didn't bring the best combination though for me and it was a little bit dull to eat. I was missing quite a lot of brightness in this one and exciting flavors that were lifting the whole dish. And I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. This dish was also recommended by the staff, so maybe I had a little bit higher expectations on this uh, dish also. As the end of this meal I chose to have the sea buckthorn and surprise and this was a take on a baked Alaska or a glass of foo as they would call it in France. And this was uh, based on the sea buckthorn as a sorbet in the middle and then you had another layer covering that one and then it was ended with the meringue uh, around it in small small dots. And then they bake that in the oven or torch that with a, with a burner to get that really nice color. The flavors of this dessert was very bright and if you have had sea buckthorn before you would know that it has a very complex flavor profile and quite a lot of acidity that was really coming through here in a nice way. It was really light and it would uh, seem that this would be a very heavy dessert but it wasn't. It was really pleasant to eat. What I though didn't enjoy that much was that the base of this whole dessert was actually a chocolate layer of some kind of a cake. And the whole flavor there with the chocolate that was together with the sea buckthorn and the meringue there, it didn't work for me. It brought down the freshness of this dish quite a lot. And I didn't like the combination of chocolate here together with the other tones of the dessert. But that said, it was pretty as a picture and you can really see the effort here from the kitchen with all of those small dots of the meringue here and it was truly beautiful to look at and it's always exciting to cut into a creation like this. So let's summarize this restaurant, shall we? So if we start with the food here and I thought there were some really strong dishes like the oyster dish that we started with and also that Jerusalem artichoke dish that was fantastic. 
but then we also had some of the dishes that didn't really live up to the expectations that I had. So I'm gonna put the food scoring here at 86 points. When it comes to the service, I'm gonna put that point on 85. Now, it was a good service throughout the meal, but there were some mistakes that happened, like leaving the plates a little bit too long on my table before taking them off. So, it was attentive, but not in the level that I would expect in a one-star Michelin restaurant. And finally, coming here to the value scoring of this restaurant, and I'm putting that point at 84, meaning that it's good value, but it's not great. And I'm judging that on the cost of the five course menu here at 1250 Danish crowns, the amount of ingredients and the quality of the ingredients that was used. So thank you very much again, guys, for watching this video together with me at Formula B in Copenhagen, and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.